Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and welcome, Mr. Secretary. Representative. Um, <clears throat> the decisions that we make here in Harrisburg obviously impact our communities, and many of those decisions we make are not made without input from our constituents. Yes, and if you, if you bear with me a second, I would like to um, share with you a comment of a local school business manager as he's weighing in following some of the uh, budget hearings. Mark, it troubles me greatly that the governor is proposing to reduce the collar on employer pension contribution increases from a maximum 4.5% increase to a maximum 2.25% increase. This is nothing more than kicking the can further down the road. Again, we need real solutions that can start digging us out of this terrible pension hole. This problem will keep getting more and more difficult to solve as we pass through time with the can cl cluttering further down the road in front of us. I don't know what all the answers are. I leave that to those that are much smarter than I. But for now, leave the caller at 4.5% and don't pump $241 million into the Ready to Learn block grant. That's just pumping new money into the same black hole that hasn't produced the results it should have in the past. Okay, I'm done venting. Hope all is well. Um, but it, it does get to the point of what happens down the road. And before many of us got here, um, in the late 1900s and 2000s, uh, we, as um, those that were here at the time, putting budgets through, waived state and local pension contributions, and were told not to escrow that money, that they didn't have to escrow it. Well, many saw that as a pot of gold when it came time to negotiate contracts. And that has further compounded our problem. So we can't be... Um, just ignoring that fact that, sure, we have a huge pension problem, but there are decisions that were made back then that impact us now, and there's decisions that we're making or not making today that are going to impact us 10 years from now. The decisions from a, from, that we talked about earlier um, in another budget hearings regarding impact fees, let me just share with you the positive impact that by having um, the Marcellus shale gas in southwestern Pennsylvania, the positive impact it has had on one of my school districts that has not had one drill, one well pad in that district, but many of the companies located there. Mark, the growth of wage tax collections for our school district has been quite robust over the last two years. I'm sure that the energy industry has helped, but there are other considerations as well. I think the implementation of Acts 32, countywide tax collection, again, something that this um, body did, is one huge factor, as well as the expansion of other area employers because of the economic climate in our region. Our audited wage tax collections for 2011-2012 were for almost $4 million. For 2013 and 14, it's going to be almost $5 million. And that's the school district share. So that's a million dollars additional because of the policies, in my opinion, that many of us has made here in, in Harrisburg. So there's a lot of positive things that have happened, but we want to make sure, as he said in his first email, that we don't make or don't make decisions or fail to make decisions that are going to impact us in the long term. And, and I will say that. I think Representative Dean was correct in, in that we made the right decision on the transportation vote. I will agree with her on that. I was proud to vote yes on that. But I do disagree with her comments regarding Medicaid expansion because I think we have a history with the federal government in showing um, areas where they've kind of suckered us in. And I think the Medicaid expansion vote is a sucker's bet. Um, we fell for that with the feds, I think, regarding special education funding. And, and, you know, they kind of dropped the ball there. And, I, and what I don't want to see happen is the graph that Representative Christiane held up earlier, that same thing happened with Medicaid expansion. You know, we show funding increases for three years at 100% funding but from the feds, and then that money's gone. And then what economic climate are we in? So I think we need to make, you know, make really mature, conscious, long-term decisions instead of what feels good in the short term. So I don't know if there's a question in there, Mr. Speaker, or Mr. Chairman. Um, but I, it, at the, this point, I don't know if there are any more questions to ask other than some observations and some comments from constituents um, that are seeing it um, impacted on their bottom lines in their budgets, um, both publicly and also in private sector companies, the decisions that we make and how important they are. 
Thank you.